Now, I need to begin with a little bit of a warning, and that is no matter how much you enjoy my talk this evening or are motivated by it, by no means am I encouraging you to go out and break your necks. Um, <laughs> you see, I still can't believe I'm the guy here today in the wheelchair, or much more the guy giving this TED talk. Not only am I sitting in this wheelchair, but the fact that I can't feel this wheelchair I'm sitting in, nor the shoes on my feet or the watch on my wrist, it still boggles my mind. Paralysis, in a way, it's, it's amazing in its simplicity. No sensation, no mobility, just this head on my shoulders that enables me to navigate each day, and, and this brain that allows me to feel all the emotions that anyone else does. As it turns out, that's all I need to live a fulfilling and meaningful life. You see, when so much gets taken away, it makes you focus so much more on the simple things in life that absolutely make life worth living. What I'm proposing to you today, that able-bodiedness does not guarantee you happiness. It is, as it has always been, the simple things in life that provides true fulfillment. Or more importantly, one sense of gratitude. A full and complete awareness of that gratitude for those simple things that makes for a fulfilling life. This is a photo of me on October 20th, 1995. This was me literally living out my childhood dream. I spent 18 years trying to get to that moment. Looking back at the years that brought me to that moment, I made sacrifices. I spent hours in the gym lifting weights trying to get stronger while my friends were playing video games. When I was old enough, my dad, he would let me take the keys to the ice arena that he managed, and, and I would spend hours in the rink weekends shooting thousands of hockey pucks. I made these sacrifices so that I could answer the one question I cared the most about. How good could I be? Could I play Division I college hockey? Check. Could I play in the NHL? For the US Olympic hockey team? Shortly after this picture was taken, none of those goals my dreams would matter. You see, it was just 11 seconds later when I fell headfirst into the dashboards, fracturing my fourth and fifth vertebrae, paralyzing me from the shoulders down. After my accident, it was hard to think that anything mattered anymore. It makes you wonder, do you really want to live at all? Would it be better to let nature take its course and you turn off the ventilator that's keeping you alive? It brings up life's biggest questions. What makes life worth living? What makes us happy? What fulfills us? I like to think that I had a good sense of gratitude prior to my injury, but I know now that my injury gave me greater recognition, greater awareness of the things that I took for granted. I, um, it's allowed me to better understand the importance, or maybe more importantly, the payoff that gratitude can have in all of our lives. According to Derek Carpenter, who has a master's in applied positive psychology from the University of Pennsylvania, people who regularly practice gratitude by taking time to reflect and notice the things that they are thankful for experience more positive emotions, feel more alive, sleep better, express more kindness and compassion. When I first read Derek's words, I thought, that's me. Roughly two years after my accident, I went down to a spinal cord research lab down at Rutgers University. When I was there, I, I met another woman who was, who was also paralyzed. And over the course of our conversation, she, uh, 
She said that later that evening she was going out with her friends and they were going to be celebrating the anniversary of her accident. She went on to say that there were gifts that came with her injury. I got to tell you, her comment, it pissed me off. How could anybody find any sort of gift in the devastation that comes with paralysis? Sure, being paralyzed, it's a significant challenge when trying to build a life that's fulfilling. There are highs and lows that are unique to each of our lives, but there's a relativity to those challenges. Whether they are physical, mental, within our control, beyond our control, they have commonalities, things that tie us all together, that play a role in, in how happy we are and impact the quality of our lives. There have been studies that made it clear, we've all heard of them, that, that being rich does not buy you happiness. Cell phones, the internet, it's, it's exacerbating sleep disorders, increasing occurrences of depression, creating unhealthy addictions. Yet there we are, still clutching our cell phones, our tablets, our computers, more than ever. There has never been a society that has been more bombarded with information and technology than the one we now live in. Sure, te technology, it has its benefits. But I would argue that we are being oversaturated by it. Comes back to your introductory economics class. The rule of the law of diminishing returns. Yeah, it's, it's kind of fun to check in on our social media, check our emails, maybe binge watch a TV series. But after a half hour, an hour, it starts to lose some of its appeal. But there we are, still clicking away, watching one more episode. These habits, they're not by accident. Millions of dollars goes into the marketing and design of, of new products so that we don't just, just want these products, that, that they make us feel like that we need them, that we need to click one more time. The engineering that goes into food so that it has just enough salt, enough sugar, enough caffeine to make us go back for one more bite, one more sip. The cards, they're being stacked against us, distracting us from our natural priorities, our, our simple pleasures. For me, the, the things that initially put a smile on my face after my accident would be the times in my hospital room, my friends or family, and we would tell stories that would make us laugh, make us cry. Stories that brought out real raw emotion. It was when they finally removed the, the GI tube and I could finally eat real food. And so when my daddy jumped in the car, he went down to Kelly's roast beef, brought me back a sandwich. Oh my God, it was amazing. <laughs> it was after being in the hospital for almost four months when I hadn't breathed in the breath of fresh air. When, when they rolled my hospital bed outside so, so that I could catch snowflakes on my tongue. Those were the moments I hung on to when every other aspect of my life had been turned upside down. I, I've always been a goal setter. I, I had goals for my hockey career. I've had financial goals, goals for the Travis Roy Foundation. These goals have helped lead me to significant accomplishments. With that said, the, the most important goals I ever established were the ones that I, I set after my accident. I refer to them as my quality of life goals. Just for a minute. Think about the three things that you enjoy most in life. Really boil down your life to its most simplest forms of pleasure. When you get home tonight, grab a post-it, write them down, stick them on the refrigerator. Maybe another copy, on your, put it on your desk. Those are the things that should be, you, those are the things that you should be devoting your time, energy, and resources to. Now the next step is to figure out how to incorporate those things into your daily life. My three quality of life goals, they revolve around family and friends, Vermont, and food. Incorporating food in my daily life, that's easy. There's a lot of things that make my taste buds dance. <laughs> Whether it's a fancy five-star restaurant, a hole-in-the-wall diner, or just pulling my favorite Ben & Jerry's ice cream out of the freezer. 
I love putting new tastes, new, new seasons, new spices, new textures. Food, it excites me. What I love about my time in Vermont is it incorporates all three of my, my civil pleasures. Friends and family, amazing food, and, and a pace to my day that, that enables me to truly relax, to, to breathe life in. The older I got, though, the more I realized just how much I enjoyed my time in Vermont. Problem was, was it was a seasonal cottage, and at the end of the summer, we'd have to close it up. And it was always depressing to think that I had to wait eight months before I could go up there again. The, um, eventually I realized just how strongly I felt about my time in Vermont. So, so I spent 12 years saving every penny that I could so that I could build a new year-round dream home. I, I finished it just last year. Just for a moment, I'll uh, let you take a photo. Take a moment, sit on my deck with me, breathe it in. Makes me feel alive. Makes me feel rich. Makes me feel grateful. Despite the challenges I face as a quadriplegic, or perhaps because of them. Today, I find joy in the simple things in life. These things aren't just enough. These things are everything. It, it shouldn't take having almost everything being taken away to make you realize just how special the simple things in life can be. A glass of ice cold lemonade on a hot summer day the first snow of the season, I love watching the snow come down. Sitting around a campfire and eating s'mores. When you leave here tonight, I hope you don't think, geez, I need to be more thankful, a little more awareness, for being a little more grateful. That's not enough. If you believe in my message, you need to be constantly aware of your thought processes. Being grateful, it needs to be instinctive so that when you do have that woe is me thought or that tinge of jealousy, just as quickly as those thoughts go through your mind, you're already thinking about something you're grateful for. Yes, you know what? I wish I could walk. But thank God for this wheelchair. You know what? Maybe you lose your job. But fortunately, you've got the skills to find a new one. When I think back to the woman I met at Rutgers University and her words regarding there being gifts that come with this injury, I gotta tell you, I agree with her. Don't get me wrong, I, I wish my injury never happened. My daily focus and awareness of the things that do make me happy is a regular point of emphasis. My heightened sense of the things that I am grateful for all the things that I do have in my life and can do, it more than keeps a smile on my face, keeps me excited about life and what's to come. Don't let another day go by without your simple pleasures. Devote more of your time and energy to the little things because they deserve your full attention and your resources so that you saturate your life in those moments, so that you saturate your life in those emotions that make you feel grateful for your life and all that you have in it. Thank you so much.